The next speaker is Professor Tariq Khan. Uh, Professor Tariq Khan is coming from Peshawar, and he has been a great supporter of our listserv courses. And this is the third time that he had kindly come to teach us at the course. Professor Khan is also the chairman of the Neurotrauma Committee of the WFNS. And it really will be, I'm looking forward to his talk, because this decompressive craniectomy, we have had different different uh, randomized control trials giving different uh, answers. And we are, uh, we, I think you had some sort of consensus meeting and it will be nice Hi. to know what we are, we are, what does the neurotrauma com community think we are with the decompressive craniectomy. Thank you. Thanks, Anand. Uh, you must be very tired now. Uh, this is a subject I think you people, most of you have been doing plenty and I think you know a lot about uh, decompressive craniectomies, uh, but I'll just um, you know do a revision with you. Um, so you all know that uh, the, the measures to reduce the uh, intracranial pressure, basically because when there's cerebral edema and intracranial hypertension, it reduces the cerebral perfusion pressure and followed by cell injury and there's a vicious circle. So to interrupt that. Uh, you give osmotic diuretics like mannitol, and uh, you also give three percent saline. You do sedation, um, raise the head thirty degrees, oxygenation, mild hyperventilation, some hypothermia. Some people still use CSF drainage if you have got a interventricular catheter. Uh, and then, if all these measures fail, then you think of decompressive craniectomy. Uh, but you know that there are some complications associated with. Uh, uh, doing all these measures like mannitol can cause pulmonary congestion, electrolyte imbalance, seizures, and you can get a rebound increase in ICP. Barbiturates uh, may cause decrease in blood pressure and may have a depressed cardiac function effect. Hyperventilation can cause increase in uh, problems as well. So the recommendations again of uh, the Brain Trauma Foundation are all there. You must have all read them and you know about it. Uh, so the role of the decompressive craniectomy is to increase the buffering capacity of the cranium, allow outward herniation, preventing compression of brain stem structures, and reconstruct brain perfusion. The ICP reduction varies from 15% to 85%, depending on the size of the bone removed. Uh, and you all know that durotomy, again, would further decrease the ICP. Uh, some pictures from the internet, and you can see that the brain bulges out, giving room to the swelling brain, and it can be a life-saving procedure. Uh, and uh, it is a mechanism which, by which a decompression gradually decreases the compression of the brain stem structures and minimizes herniation. So the idea is to reduce the intracranial pressure, improve the blood flow, reduce damage to the surrounding brain tissue, and to reduce secondary brain injury. Early decompressive surgery, craniectomy reduces brain edema formation by more than 50% and prevents secondary brain damage when performed early enough, uh, you know, as soon as possible. And you can see from the scan that increase in focal cerebral blood flow uh, in a decompressed brain, it, and it helps uh, these patients. So conditions which require, of course, traumatic brain injury, uh, malignant cerebral infarction, cerebral venous thrombosis, intracerebral hematomas, metabolic encephalopathies. So the types is prophylactic or primary decompressive craniectomy. Any surgical decompression performed with or without brain tissue removal in patients undergoing surgery, principally for the evacuation of any type of intradural lesion. So you can remove, do a decompressive craniectomy if you're doing a acute subdural hematoma as well uh, with that seeing if, of course, the brain is bulging out and you can try and uh, remove the, the bone flap. Uh, so the decision is taken to control the, not to control the ICP, but to avoid increase in ICP and it's based on CT scan and not on intracranial pressure. And then there is therapeutic decompression or secondary craniectomy. It is continuous ICP monitoring and is conducted when the ICP is refractory to medical treatment. 
Now, in my country, they, uh, very few places they do ICP monitoring. So we, we are doing, uh, without that, uh, refractory to medical treatment and ICP raised. Any idea at what level you are doing uh, decompressive clinectomies while you're monitoring ICP? Are you, all of you, yeah? Varies, yeah, 22, 23. But very hard to know that if it is 24, would persistently would you do it or not? So that's a question which you know you have to ask yourself, uh, really, whether you know at what what level and to what persistence is that? You know, uh, and as, as Raymond said, that what is more important, uh, whether the ICP or whether it is the patient examination. So it's just difficult to know. So, so certain things about you know patient selection, uh, something which you should think about, something very important. Uh, of course, failed pharmacotherapeutic intervention, uh, as I mentioned, early versus late. It's been shown that uh, the earlier the decompressive clinectomy is done within 20, 48 hours, the better the results. Uh, of course, uh, before signs of uh, brain herniation, it's been shown that if the GCS is below 8, there is more than 70% uh, chances of mortality. So it is better to do it, you know, at least before, after, you know, it, it, it's at least 8, you know. And age less than 70, 75% mortality if the age is more than 70. Of course, primary brainstem injury would give you a poor prognosis. Uh, pupillary findings, if they are dilated pupils, persistent, again, poor prognosis. And if the ICP has been higher than 40, again, it's poor prognosis. So you have to look at all these factors before you decide that you're going to go ahead and do a decompressive craniectomy, uh, and also discuss with the family about all that, of course. So from our point of view in trauma, uh, because it's a, it's a place where we, uh, and a lot of uh, people are doing it without ICP monitoring. In fact, most of them in the lower and middle income countries. It's on the CT scan findings, diffuse brain edema with or without brain contusions and subdural hematoma. The effacement of basal systems and ventricles, midline shift, GCS 9 to 12, or if there's a drop of two degrees from previous, and age less than 70. Uh, now, you must realize also that in many countries, developing countries, uh, you may be able to do only one CT scan. So you cannot do follow-up CT scans to see what is happening to that. And I think uh, for them, they have to decide there and then whether they are doing uh, a decompressive craniectomy or not. Uh, so as I said, it's more to, 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 to try and avoid raised ICP rather than to treat ICP. But of course, in, in developed countries, uh, ICP, refractory ICP is one of the main things to go at. But with the ICP, of course, the pupil reactions have to be, I think, taken into account as well. So various studies have demonstrated that it reduces, improves ICP, cerebral oxygenation, and cerebral compliance. And in pediatric population, uh, they did a study and they have found, of course, that there's a great help in doing decompressive craniectomies in pediatric population. The surgical technique. Unilateral, bitemporal, bifrontal. Uh, unilateral when there is, uh, of course, on one side there is edema or there's contusions. Uh, you can do a, a, a unilateral one. Uh, many people would do bifrontal clinectomies. Some would do bitemporal, especially in pediatric population. The important thing is the size. I think if you do small clinectomy, it's, it's going to fail. It's not going to be of any benefit. In fact, the brain herniation would, would cause further damage. You have to, so it's at least 12 to 15 centimeter frontal temporal parietal, as low into the as low into the uh, uh, into the temporal fossa. I think that's very important to to do that. And durotomy and duroplasty. So you can do different types of durotomies, uh, fish tail or crisscross, whatever. And then do a duroplasty. So uh, duroplasty, you can use 
pericranium uh, for countries lower middle income or even the galia. And of course, developed countries have got many uh, artificial duras available to them to do that. Uh, but I feel that you know pericranium is is maybe even better as good because it's it's. So bifrontal, the question whether you leave the the midline strip there or you remove that. Some people would remove that, and in fact, after opening a dura, really cut the fox as well to give as much as decompression as possible uh, uh, to that. So bifrontal again is something which should be considered in a generalized cerebral edema patients and would be very, very helpful to them. Again, the size as big as possible, I think it's going to make a very big difference. Complications are there. Uh, it's, it's not something you should be taken lightly. It's very important to, to consider it. Uh, you can have intracerebral hematomas. You can get CSF leak. You can get wound infection, many others. Uh, the, the most important thing which was talked about earlier regarding even in the cases of infarction that you have to, you must discuss with the family because there would be patients who would be in persistent vegetative state and those are the patients who the family have to look after or uh, the state has to look after and something which would be very difficult. Uh, so there's an article there regarding uh, uh, about the complications. Uh, so, so there are many, many complications there. So, must you must not take it lightly that oh, let's do the decompressive craniectomy. Then the cranioplasty, of course, you know when you remove the bone flap, you either uh, put it in the abdomen, uh, you know, in 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 the fat, some kind of tissue, or you put it in the freezer minus 40 degrees, and and you can keep it there. Uh, so, uh, cranioplasty timing. Uh, does anybody have any thoughts on that? What what do they do? How soon? Months and months. But but why do you do the cranioplasty? First of all, of course, so that uh, the brain is not damaged further. But what what other? Why? I mean, you know. Because you may get headaches, you can get hem hemiparesis, you, you can get hydrocephalus uh, in patients who, who do not get a, a, a cranioplasty. Uh, three to six months is the period which normally people think. Now they're thinking more and more doing it earlier and earlier, uh, the cranioplasty. So very important. What material? So uh, your own bone is the, one of the best things to do. You, 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 can, you can replace it. I think that's the best thing. Uh, you can, you know, uh, also use many other ways of acrylic uh, and, and, and many other things, and titanium. So it improves CSF motion, uh, it improves cerebral blood flow, cerebral metabolism, and increases uh, CSF uh, and superior central sinus pressures. It, it, it improves all that. So it's important. So you can all use these metals and different things. Um, titanium has been used for a long time, and now I think people are using 3D uh, 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 to develop uh, the, the, the bone or, or the methane mercurinate. So we did a small study, and uh, uh, these were patients who were not monitored by ICP, and we found that the results were sort of similar, except that we found that uh, uh, the poor outcome was slightly higher, 27%. And these were patients. I think the reason was what we felt was because for us, there is no rehab. Rehabilitation is one of the most important things in this. Uh, because once they survive, if you don't give them rehabilitation, they're not going to really improve. So you know the two important studies, uh, DECRA study and the rescue ICP. So the DECRA study created a lot of hue and cry because it said that maybe medical treatment is better. Uh, and, but then there were a lot of criticism because there were a lot of crossovers and the pupillary dilatation was not taken into account. So there was another study, um, uh, the, the, the rescue ICP, and, and basically what they found was that you may be getting more survivors, uh, less mortality, but like you would be producing many more uh, persistent vegetative patients 
And that, I think, was something, an ethical dilemma. And that's why people are talking about that more and more discussion with the family regarding what you're going to do. That is why in, in Cambridge last year, uh, there was a consensus meeting on decompressive cranectomies uh, to, to discuss and come to a consensus on which patients should have and what should be done. Uh, and I think that will come out very shortly for, for, for everybody. Uh, so it was about primary and secondary indications, surgical technique, and cranioplasty. And there's going to be uh, uh, in ICRAN in, in June in Naples, they're going to discuss a consensus on the cranioplasty. So I think uh, that, that will be something to wait for for everybody. And I would like to invite you all to Peshawar uh, for the ICRAN, this international conference on recent advances in neurotraumatology in 7 to 10 March 2019. We're giving uh, quite a few scholarships, accommodation, registration to young neurosurgeons there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Khan. Two questions for Prof Khan, please. Questions? Professor, has, has the uh, rescue ICP changed your practice at all? Oh, yes, definitely. I think it, it, it has started people thinking a lot. And as, as one of the new surgeons, Honeybull from uh, Australia said, that I, I would start thinking, what would I want for myself? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I think as somebody, people were talking about that you want to put in your will or whatever you call it, whether you, would you like to have a decompressive cranectomy done or not? Uh, I think uh, important if the young patient uh, you know, uh, people are not dilated. I think there are many factors, but I think you have to be much more uh, conservative. I think people had gone, you know, the other way. They were very, very aggressive. Now, at least myself, and I think many others have, have started being somewhat conservative on the whole thing. I think certainly.